you ever start a project and halfway through it, you realize that you don't need to be doing the thing that you're doing that you thought was really important. So you started doing it, thought, oh, there's a rush, but then you think of an alternative to what you're going to do and decide you don't need to do that thing anymore. What's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Hot. It's hot. It's still like summer. I've been talking about how I need to pull some of these banana cannas because they're encroaching on the view from the window and they're shading out a lot of the gingers that are over here. Gingers that are suffering big time. Just, they had a rough winter, so they need as much light and everything they can get to rebound and do well this year. I, I started to dig them up. You can see that's why there's a shovel there and there's some on the side. I was digging on them and I was thinking, okay, the ones that I dig up, oh, these are covered in Japanese beetles. How did I not know? Okay, one thing at a time. Put that fire out later. Been working on getting those dug up and as I was digging them up, well, not as I was digging them up, I went in and I took a little break. Phone rang, then all of a sudden Instagram happened for a few minutes and then email. And I saw that Greenscape, one of the nurseries out here, is having a sale. Tropicals are 30% off. And last time I was there, they had some gorgeous, really big Borneo giant alocasias. The I didn't tell you what the... I was going to dig these up. I was going to put a clump on each side of the stairs up here, trying to get some more privacy up there. Long term, I'd like to get evergreens planted on each side of those stairs. But for now, it's like I just want anything that's tall and is going to obstruct the construction view. That's all I really care about. The construction is actually kind of cool to watch. It's more just getting some more separations. So when you're down there, it doesn't feel like you're walking around in somebody else's backyard. Cannas, not really ideal to transplant, especially when it's hot outside, but I have them. I needed to get some out of the way. So I thought, let's do that. But then I see this email from Greenscape and they have these beautiful, or had them last time I was there, giant alocasias, great big Borneo giants and thinking, hey, you know what? Those would look pretty cool on each side of those steps. So instead of finishing this, I'll get back to it later. Let's head out to some nurseries, go get some plants. Also, I need to see if I can find some more blue jangle hydrangeas and I need to get some milkweed because it's pollinator week. Yeah, that could be fun. Let's go do that. Come back, maybe get a little bit of yard work done. Probably have a big plant haul. Just call it a hunch. I just have a feeling I'm gonna do some damage while I'm there. Then I really, 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 I need to bring the tie out. Still in the garage. We're supposed to be hitting into the 90s this weekend, like mid 90s. It's that time of year, so I need to get that out of the garage. I can heat the garage up. I can't cool it off very well. That goes right here. So I need to get this fountain rebuilt. Shouldn't be a big deal. Just need to like sweep some junk out of the way and move some things around. And well, the tie has to come up. I'll do all that at another time. My battery's running low. Let's go to some nurseries and charge my batteries. Like let go of you and see what you do. And then he just kept on walking into the parking lot. Oh, that's not good. Don't do that. I didn't film at the first nursery because things got a little bit out of control. Also, Louise here. Hi Lou. Hi Lou. Hi Lou. You wanna say hi? Good boy. Good boy. It's Sugar Creek now. I got. I was high from the. From the, no, 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 you don't have to be quiet. It's fine. What are these? People enjoy sibling banter. Mandevillas. Two, two of these behind the couch would be so pretty. They would be. You don't get much sun there, though, do you? Yeah. Larger leaves on yeah. them have a crinkled texture to them. They're so pretty. It's one of my favorites. It's a classic. They also kind of smell weird, though. So, see here, the like the newer types have a smaller leaf that's more glossy, which I think, are feel like that's more your vibe. No, these yeah, are mandevillas, just like those. It's just a Good different, light. just a different type. So the leaves, the leaves uh, are a little bit glossier, tend to be smaller, closer together, and these flower a lot more heavily than the yeah. other ones do. These are nice. Look at that, so much color. It's reminding me of fall. Why am I here again? Vinca and Vincan. hydrangeas. Hydrangeas, right. Yeah. right, 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 right. Should just grab the cart before going all the way over there, shouldn't I? Oh, the star ferns. Those look nice. That is beautiful. Vigorous, pretty pink. Where were these when I was planting the? These are gorgeous. Doesn't show quite on camera. It's a very nice pink. Isn't that a nice pink? It's a really pretty pink. It's a very pretty pink. Thank you. Trying to. Oh, I see elephant ears. Oh no. Can't get those. Look at how tiny these crepe myrtles are. Barista perky pink. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, here we go. Those are nice. That is adorable. Okay, not seeing the jangles. Don't know if they have them, but really, look at these. Aren't these cool? 
wow time. This, maybe it's not cool and I my sunglasses off. No, that's still cool. That looks neat. Where's the tag? Starry double florets of salmon in deep pink with green highlights grace this rebloomer from early summer through fall. The cross between a macrophile and a paniculata. Sometimes sold the name Princess Diana. Three feet to four feet tall by three feet wide. These are neat. I like the, they look like tropical flowers, don't they? Yeah. Kind of. No, I didn't realize I was still recording. Oops, I'll probably leave that. I don't see any blue jangles. That's pretty much where this ends. Holy freaking cr just multiple, multiple plant gasms. That was fun. Sorry, I didn't film while I was at the first nursery. I was, I was with my sister and we were talking. She just got back from London and Italy and there was just, there was so much to catch up on. Mostly just got to hear a lot about Vanderpump rules, which I haven't been keeping up with. That was still, it was nice quality family time. Made sure to film what was going on at Sugar Creek to an extent. We'll go over all the plants in just a few minutes. But first, I need to handle this this area over here. Already dragged the Monstera out, got the tie sitting over there. The tie is going to go over here, right in front of this fountain, which will be over here. In years past, maybe I should talk, do like do things as I'm talking. That would be a good way to use time here. About to say in years, but oh, hello, hi. I didn't know you were back there. Hey Derbs, how you doing baby? You staying out of the plants? No, you're just walking right through them, aren't you? That's fine. As long as you're not trampling my impatience, I don't really care that much right now. It's too hot to care. I was just going to talk about how I've been supporting the fountain itself inside the basin, but there's really no reason to go into all that. But I'm not even over there yet. I need to get all of these cleared out of here because once the months do... Okay, you can't just stand in front of me. Not when I'm carrying stuff. That doesn't work. Because once I have the Monstera over here, I'm not going to be able to, well, it'll be in the way. I'm not gonna be able to get back here. That's probably pretty self-explanatory. How is this so dry? You're in a self-watering pot and there's water in, nope, there's no water in the bottom. That's how it's so dry. I'm gonna set that down on the table so I can remember to give it some water. I needed to get these aeroids out of here anyways because the vines and things were gonna to start to grow into these containers. I already need to put this McDowell into a new container, don't I? Look at how much that's coming off the edge. Yeah, the aeroids can stay on the table just because I feel like by the time I'm done with what I'm about to do, I'm not gonna feel like trying to find a spot for all those. This way I know they're in the shade and they're safe from the sun. I'm thinking I should, there's trumpet vines everywhere back here. And I typically just let the trumpet vines do their thing. They're a native, so you know they can grow up the trees and do their thing. It's beautiful, hummingbirds enjoy them. But this is, this is a little, I might, I, that should go. May as well do something about it while I'm standing right here, right? Get down here and get all those bits pulled out. I'm tempted to throw it back here, but that's not a, I need to gut this space out too. Not doing that in this video though. I would like to, but there's just not time. Not enough hours in the day to pull that off in this video. One thing I hadn't accounted for in the prior video to this one where I was talking about, oh, I'm going to do this, that, and the other, and not considering, oh, but you only have two days to pull it off. Yeah, that's not enough. That's not going to happen. Likely to happen. Anyways, there's my pot storage. Look how well that bench held up. Not surprised by that. Remnants of the old tiki bar. Tiki bar that fell apart very quickly. It was built to go outdoors, but, but uh, yeah, I know how that worked out. Since it's in pieces, laying behind everything. Do you want a ball? Look, Turbo. Ball? You want it? You want a ball? Go get a ball. It's this area. This is all getting, well, it's not getting a huge makeover. I'm going to gut it out. I think I'm going to get rid of the Euonymus because it's just, I mean, they look like trash. I have the U's that I want to put up here in place of those Euonymus that are hardy all the way to zone four, so I'm not gonna have to worry about winter burn with them. I guess I could plant the U's in between each one of the Euonymus, but the way I see it, if I lift up the Euonymus, then the hole's already partially dug, so I should probably just do it that way. Gotta keep it simple, right, Turbs? Keep it simple, good boy, good boy. I don't know why I'm telling him good boy, but I'm always telling him not to stand right in front of me when I'm walking around. This belongs to a hummingbird feeder that used to hang up here in this pine tree, and the actual glass part that goes in it has been missing for at least 10 years. So I'd say it's safe to go ahead and put that in the bucket of things that I can throw away. Thunder blocks, don't need these anymore. So these are what I had been using uh, to hold up this fountain. Now I have bricks. We'll get, when it's time to talk about that, we'll get to talking about that. Didn't need to bring that up right now. Get these out of here. I think I'm gonna, yeah, I need to do that. <laughs> Maybe explain what it is I'm saying about the thing that I just said I need to do. Uh, what's rake? Yeah, I need to come in here with a rake. Clean up all this stuff that's fallen down, gotten messy. You can see why it fell down. 
Yeah, and everything that's left over here are all parts that go to the fountain. So I'm just gonna get this cleaned up. We can start putting the fountain. No, no, no. Get this cleaned up. Get that out of the way and get the Monstera. That's what I need to do. That's I'm trying to stay on track here. Okay, that spot cleaned out or as cleaned out as it's gonna get. Hey, Tobes, you haven't been around you to say hi? Yeah, good boy, Toby. Nice, Toby. The Monstera. Just need to get this over into that spot. Thought I'd show you all this before I start moving it any further. You see that? And then over here, that one right there. That's the floor of the garage. This thing was not easy to get out. It's the styrofoam underlayment. It's not like the actual cement. Clearly, that's styrofoam. This thing had run its roots all the way underneath that styrofoam and it was underneath the pond too. So it was a good thing I got this out when I did because those roots potentially would have gone up and punctured that liner. I wouldn't put it past it. Those roots are gnarly. I had to do a lot of cutting. They were all over the place inside of the different containers. I think this is good to go. I gave it a heavy watering yesterday. It still feels pretty dry, but the plant itself looks like it's hydrated. I moved it this far and then I was like, Ugh, oh, do I need to be more careful? But I mean, it's only like another 50 feet. I think you can make that happen. As long as I'm gentle, I'm gonna try and get this tucked away into this corner over here. Really, Dobes? Right as I approach with the plant, they decide, you guys need a few minutes to check it out? Need to get all your sniffies done? Okay, well, eventually they're going to get the smelling part out of their system and there'll be a monster over here. As I was doing this, I was scooting it in there thinking to myself, wow, this is so much easier. Because last year I had to drag it over and around the adenidia palm. That one was right there and like lift it and take it around behind everything in a really narrow gap. But by not having the fountain there, I was able to pull it right into place and I was standing behind it thinking, this is perfect. This is great. I can angle it however I want to instead of it just kind of being stuck wherever it lands because of the awkwardness of trying to get in from over there. The thing is, it's done a lot of growing, <laughs> like a lot. That's a 10 foot light pole right there. I'm not gonna be able to see the fountain in here. That's not going to work. I need to, what's the whole point of this? Not much of a point to any of this if I can't even see the fountain. The tie looks good there. That looks nice, but I am gonna have to figure something out. Not quite sure what yet, but I don't know. I'm gonna keep playing with it. I almost wonder if maybe I need to try and get it behind the light pole. So the monster is like coming in or out from around it more over here, but even still, that stuff's going to be in front of the fountain if I do that, just not as in front of it. It's gonna end up being in front of it. Huh. Ah, I gotta think on this one for a minute, see what I can figure out. It was nice having you as a helper, Toby. Stood right by me the whole time. It, it, this is, it's gonna have to work. Not perfect, but I don't really know what else to do here. I think I could maybe adjust it on the pole some, but I would like for the plant to have several more days outside with really intense hydration before I start messing with the stem on it because it's a little bit brittle. Like I said, I watered it pretty heavily yesterday, but the pot still felt very light and dry. The garage is hotter than outside, so it's probably in the 90s in there. Time to get this out. It looks great from over here. That's looking beautiful. It's nice, very nice, but from the front where you can actually see it, not so much. The leaves will shift slightly over time with the sun, but I don't know if that's gonna be something I'm gonna be waiting on to happen. You can kind of see that stem down in here. Maybe I can walk around so you can see it a little bit better. See the stem right here, how far that sticks out from the support pole. It's really hard to make out. But it goes back there to the pole and it's been growing away from, that's what they do. They just need a support structure around them to support them as they grow up. They don't really grab onto things all that well, as you can see. And of course it's not helping that the newest leaf it opened up is facing away from everything else. I can fix that though, it's still young enough. If I pull that like that, it'll firm up like that. I don't think I wanna do that to it though. You can just stare right there for now. Yeah, I might be able to lift this up some more, but that's not really going to help with all that. I need to chop it. That's what I need to do. I need to cut that stem and plant this all over again so it's going straight up and down on that pole. But uh, I don't want to do that. Not right now anyways, because like I said, it needs to be well hydrated for several days of good watering, nice humidity and airflow. Want it to be in prime condition before doing any chopping on it. So with that being said, I'm just going to move on and say it's fine. Everything's fine. You can tinker around with it some more later. I need to get this fountain done, which should be easy. Where's my tripod? It's right next to you, Toby. Thanks, Tobes. I suppose one of the nice things about having the Monsteria further over that way, despite the awkward angle of the foliage, right? I mean, that's weird how they're facing away from everything. But one thing that I like about that is that 
I should be able to put more plants around the sides of the fountain, which I think would look pretty cool. I already have a hole that's pretty well, yep, right there, it fits perfectly. This is the part where you're supposed to check it and make sure it's level. I'm just eyeballing it, it looks good to me. I could actually probably shift this around just a scotch more. Yep, that looks good enough to me. So in years past, Am I blocking this? Can is, is any of this in view? I got bricks. I'm excited about the bricks. In the past, what I've done is just use shards from a cinder block to support that big pot that goes inside here. Yeah, I don't want to do that anymore. Bricks are a lot better. I just, it's one of those things where every single time I'd go to the store, I just kept forgetting to buy them. Don't know why. I go to Home Depot and Lowe's all the time, but it wasn't until the last vlog when I was there, which would have been, I think, last weekend. And I saw the bricks. I went, oh, yeah, 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 get bricks. You need bricks. Here we are. Now you're all caught up. And of course, the higher have these stacked, the less stable they are. But that's a pretty heavy pot that's going to be on top of these. So it shouldn't go anywhere. This should be fine. The whole point here is to be able to lift the container up higher than it was before. Because before it was just lifted up high enough to get the hose run underneath it for the pump. But it's a beautiful pot, and I don't want a whole lot of it to be submerged under water. Might be pushing it, but I'm wondering, maybe I can go up one more. May as well give it a try since we're doing this. It feels pretty stable. I think it'll be okay once the actual pot's sitting on top of it. Okay, now for the kind of difficult part. I just realized I lifted this pot up without, I forgot to move the camera. You can't even see what I'm doing. Plane came through anyways. I just, I set it down. Didn't miss that much. So I think that's a pretty good fit. I would like to take it up just one more higher, but I think that would be really pushing it. This is going to have to do it because also have to remember that the more of the pot that's out of the base out of here, it's that much more water weight on top of everything. I don't want to like crack the container or the bottom. That could happen. I've had both these for a really long time. What do I need to do now? Water. Yeah, it needs water. Okay, starting to get really excited. Don't know if it's going to hold water. It should. I resealed some cracks that were in there not too long ago, and there's a little bit of water in the bottom. But there's now weight on it. I didn't mention that before I set the basin down in here. I just kind of took my foot and lightly went over the area. There's sand and gravel in the spot underneath where this goes. That's why it just kind of locked into place because it goes in the same spot every year because I prepared the ground for it to take this weight more evenly. I always usually end up having to re-level it though. Here's my pump. It's just a super cheap pond waterfall pump off Amazon. Had this one for a few years. Won't be shocked if it doesn't work. Not trying to be a pessimist, just realistically. Won't be surprised if it doesn't work and there may not be a fountain <laughs> to look at when this is over. And then I have a one inch hole drilled in the bottom of the container that has a piece of one inch tube running inside it. So there's a one inch tube inside of this as well. Okay, pump is in place. I just need to figure out where the other end of it is so I can plug it in. And then I have to turn the water back on because you have to have more water to fill the film that not film to fill the volume of the pot that's up here. Oh, uh, I hear water. It's filling up. Go ahead and bring y'all in. Look at the edge. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Got excited. We got way ahead of myself. This is not done yet. Can't get that up and going just yet. Uh, I have a metal plant stand on the inside. I also have a couple of submersible pond lights down inside of here to shine up at the top of all this. And then this is just, it's a piece of egg crate. Usually find it at the hardware store with the uh, lighting fixtures that goes between fluorescent fixtures and drop panel roofing. You can cut it very easily and just make it fit. Okay, you know, Bamboo, you're beautiful. I like what you're doing for the shot, but you're also blocking it. I'm gonna tie that back there. But I've cut this to be a perfect, it's a, I've cut this to be a perfect fit. Okay, well, it was a perfect fit last year. Sometimes, you know, pottery can change its shape. You just push it down. It'll go into place. Okay, there we go. Sit nice and snug, like a glove. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. And then here I have a bucket full of clear, just glass pieces from the craft store that I did wash out and clean in the springtime when I took this part and cleaned it. The bucket has unfortunately since then filled up with pine needles. I guess I will just individually set every single one of these down on here so it doesn't take pine needles with it. That's probably going to take a minute. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to waste battery. Be right back. I lost patience doing it one by one, so I went and just dumped it. The pine needles, they'll wash out. They'll flush away. It's fine. Gently spread those around. Some of them will fall. Some of them won't. I like to make a divot usually in the middle, but I really need to turn the pump on and see what the flow is going to be like before I move those rocks around much. So I usually have to do some manipulation in order to keep it all from 
trying to reach the outlet. There are usually some areas where it splatters more than others. Utters more than others. I think the water is going to want to go that way. So I may have to take the water out of here and re-level it to get to come over the... We'll make it happen. And eventually there's going to be a beautiful fountain over here. Sounds like it's getting to the top, getting quieter. Water should be almost about ready to come over that edge there. It's possible that I may need a stronger pump. There's a lot more pressure now with this being further up above the water or water pressure pushing down is why I think I might need to put a bigger pump in here to really get the right flow over the edge. I can see it though, the water is coming up. There's gonna be a big burp of birch tree seeds because I couldn't really take this apart and dump it. I figured I'd just let it dump out when it gets going. So it may not be the most beautiful reveal. I think it stopped. Oh no, did it stop? Is it not going up any higher? Yeah, we're going on about five or six minutes here. I'll be ordering a new pump for this thing tonight because that's too slow. I do want this to have a nice gradual flow. I just don't want it splattering all over the place, but this is perhaps too slow. Well, maybe I'm overreacting. Just sit around, wait and see. But I'm getting impatient. It's supposed to be a nice gradual flow either way. So otherwise water just splatters all over the place. It's about to the top. I don't know. Can y'all see that? No, not quite yet. All right. Well, that was anticlimactic. Uh, this is, it's leaning just a little bit backwards. So the, what very little flow there is, isn't really anything worth looking at is going over the backside. Easy fix. I'll just give it a gentle tilt this direction for now so you can see. Oh, look. Oh, oh, beautiful. Very gentle flow. Need to put a bigger pump on this for sure. And fixing the angle, not a big deal. All I have to do for that is just unplug it. The water will drain down. And then I have a couple bricks that are cut at an angle that I just put underneath there and just lightly lift the base up, kick some more rocks under it. It'll be good. Wasn't prepared for the pump to not be strong enough, but that's all right. Still looks good. Got pieces of the garage floor over there that got drug over from the monster that I need to clean up. But progress. Now there's fresh running water out here for the dogs to drink, which I like. I don't want them drinking out of the pool. Okay, I'm gonna make a few adjustments, see if I can't get that flow to look a little bit better. Okay, hey, hi. Next morning, that's why the light's different. You can see better where it's flowing now, kind of. I ordered a new pump. It won't be here until after this video is out. So that was, I guess, all for nothing. Before I get going on the next thing, look at the size of the spider. There's your trigger warning for people who are afraid of spiders. This thing is freaking huge. There's my hand next to the spider. It doesn't look as big when my hand's right there, but just, it's big. That's a big freaking spider. That was probably upsetting to some of y'all. It's okay, it's just a spider. It's gonna help eat all the other critters out here. The spiders are good. I don't usually prefer them in the pool. Those things, they like jump around on top of the water, they get in the skimmers and they, I don't, I may relocate it, but I'm not gonna kill it. Let's uh, talk about all the fun plants I got. Now that the fountain is done-ish. Should I wrap this up, I suppose? Mess around with it for a while. Got it leveled out and the, it's just not going to flow the way I want it to until there's a stronger pump in there. That's all. Like I said, new pump will be here tomorrow, but that's the video will already be out. So doesn't really matter. Oh, there's the top of my head. See my head moving around up there? It's early. My brain's still kicking into gear. It's the perfect time to talk about new plants. Look at all the, there's so many fun things over here. BP. He's such a good boy. He has been very calmly and patiently sitting over here just watching the tortoise. We're gonna do the thing again today where you don't wanna focus. That's been the other really nice thing about this setup with that little wall right there. Obviously Turbo and Toby can go right over this little one with the lava rocks in front. But it gives Colby a chance to get to his lettuce and his tortoise food without having to compete with the dogs. Not so much with Turbo. He's really good about leaving the tortoise food alone, but Toby, the second you give him an inch, you turn your back and that dog will snatch up a head of lettuce and run off with it. Really think that that's all that fair to Colby, who's just trying to be a tortoise and eat his lettuce. That's been really nice having a space where I can feed Colby and don't have to worry about the dogs getting to the food. Only because Turbo's such a good dog. Toby can't quite get over these rocks. I've watched him. He's just, he's not really pushing himself that far. He's an old man and Turbo's just being well behaved. Okay, here's the plant time. Checking out the fountains. That's good. That's why I set it up. You're supposed to drink out of the fountain. That's good. Can't wait for that new pump to get here. It's a nice trickle. It looks good. Last night it was lit up. The lights were shining up through the glass on top. Looked neat. It just needs more. I know you probably just want to see the plants at this point. Got a gorilla cart here full of goodies. Lots and lots of goodies. All of which are plants that I have been trying to find 
for a while. Well, not all, that's not true. There's a lantana in the front that was an impulse buy. That was just, I saw it and I was like, you know what? That's a nice looking lantana. I'd like to have it, so here we are. It says Bloomify on there. I don't know if that's the grower or the variety mango. Bloomify mango. It's a nice, decent sized plant too. It has an orangey apricot outside with a yellow center, mango-y type color. I just liked it. It was a nice soft color. The annuals, as maybe you saw at the nurseries, very much slim pickings at this point. You don't get all your plant shopping done by like July, no, June. June 14th to the 20th, somewhere in there, you're not not gonna get much to work with when it comes to annuals, at least not from most of the local nurseries. Although Sugar Creek, they're really good about restocking annuals. So I bet they'll have a big flush of new annuals coming in in the next few weeks. Find one more of those Vinca, one more of those tattoo orange Vinca, but I'll be going around to other nurseries, keep my eyes peeled. I'm sure I'll find one. In the meantime, I think I may actually just take cuttings from the other one, which I'm not really supposed to do, but I'm not selling it, so it's fine. I've decided it'll be okay. <laughs> take it inside. Maybe I can just get one rooted in the next few weeks and pop that in the other container. I don't want to try and root it outside, though. I don't know if that would go very well for it. If I find another one, great. If not, then I have a few cuttings that are gonna be doing something. It's worth a try. Vinca should root just fine from cuttings. In the front here, I have three Asclepius tuberose. These are a native here in Missouri. It's just a milkweed, butterfly weed. Remember what I mentioned earlier, pollinator week, so need to do a little bit of virtue signaling here. These are important to have around for the monarchs. There are a lot of host plants that are important to have around for the butterflies. I've always had Asclepius tuberosa planted up here on this hill, but they didn't come up this year, which it, I don't but why. It was a harsh winter, but these are a zone three through nine. So I don't know if the winter had anything to do with it. Not really sure what happened. I struggled to find these as nice, rooted, sturdy, established plants. From my experience, the tuberoses do not like to have their roots messed with. So when uh, buying them, it's good to find them that are nice and sturdy and hopefully with a nice solid root mass so that when you go to plant them, you can just very gently get them out of their container into their new hole and backfill it. When I usually find them, they have a lot of flop on top. There's a lot of give around the very base of the plant and those just never do well for me. End up just kind of hanging around looking sad for a few years and either reestablish themselves or die back. So it's like every two or three I plant, I might lose one. This is the first time that I have seen some that were really nice and sturdy looking. So I think that these will do much better than ones I've tried in the past. They're also much larger too. I had gotten a whole bunch from, I think it was Lowe's several years ago and they just, I don't know, they didn't do well. I don't know what the deal was. They're a very simple plant that is native here. They're growing all over the place in the sides of the highway and soil that's very similar to what's over, over here. Not so much similar to what's going on over here. But further down that hill, clay, they're good with it. Well-drained, pretty dry spot, that's their jam. So that's all this is. These are replacement milkweeds. Need to have those around for the butterflies. And I really just like the way the tuberoses look. They think that they have a nice size to them. The flowers on them are very pretty. Aphid magnets, but that's okay. Usually that gets handled naturally on its own. So I was glad to find those because I needed a few of them. I know Greenscape, they always come through with the natives. So Sugar Creek too. Great nurseries for picking up natives, if that's something you're looking for in the St. Louis area. They have a ton to choose from. No more natives in here, just other fun things. Can you tell what this is? Look at that fun, shiny green foliage. The other thing I love so much is the nice, I should say what it is. It's a lime, key lime, just a cute little key lime. Nothing to it. As far as citrus go, I enjoy growing them. Calamondins are my favorite to grow it's because I think that they look adorable with their tiny little perfectly round orange fruit on them. Not, well, they're edible, just not tasty. I decided to go with something where I would actually use the fruit. I don't really have any desire to have a lemon tree. They look pretty, especially when there's lemons on them. They smell nice, but I don't use a ton of lemons. Key limes though, I like a key lime. I like the smell of lime. I like the taste of lime. Mostly, it's mostly for drinks. That's what that's about. But you still get the citrusy flowers. This is at a manageable size too. So I'm gonna let this do some more growing and then be pruning on it to fill it back out. But I want this to stay more as a smaller bush. 
if that makes sense. Because I do better with these in my house than in the grow space. The grow space has gotten more difficult <laughs> to keep them. Once you have the heat and the humidity and everything that I have in there for all of the aeroids and other tropicals, the citrus just are always full of pests and problems. But in the house, I just put them in a bright sunny window, splash some water in the soil maybe once or twice a month during the winter time, and that's it, and they do fine. Easier when it's cool and dry versus hot and damp. There's so many other things that can go wrong. Just finished flowering, there were some buds on it that I think have fallen off, some spent buds that have fallen off since I got home. May produce at this size, I don't know. Might have to wait a few years, I don't really care. I have had key limes produce on very small plants before, so I think it should be fine. Might put out a few this year. There's a Waikiki, isn't it beautiful? I mean, kind of, all right, it's a little bit scraggly, but it'll fill out, especially once it gets in the ground. I know I already have the Waikiki that I got from Plant Delights, but it's just so little. All of y'all keep sending me pictures of your nice, big, beautiful Waikikis who live down further south, where apparently you can get these at Walmart for like 15 bucks in great big pots. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen them around the nurseries in larger pots for much more expensive prices. This one's from Monrovia. It was $40. So considering, I guess that's not that bad, I would like for it to be slightly larger and more established plant, but that's all right. It's a colocasia. It's going to do a good amount of growing. I am really looking forward to getting this one in the ground. That leaf, it's so pretty, which you'd be able to tell if the camera's autofocus would do what it's supposed to do and work. There we go. Yeah, there it is. And that's just going to get prettier and prettier. The larger the leaves get, the more mature the plant gets, the more pink and fun vibrancy there will be in the very middle of those leaves. One of my favorites of the colocasias, especially of the newer colocasias. Okay, and this next one, I'm trying to figure out how to best show it because there's multiple angles where you'd want to see this from. From the top, which you cannot see, go ahead and bring y'all up. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Look at that leaf. So neat. Just one great big leaf. You can see how it comes through as a swoop that curls through. Very large leaf, and this is still a youngster. This will get much bigger. As it is right now, this is how big it's going to be. But over the years, it will get much bigger. And then the next part, look at the base of the leaf. And it looks like a stem, but it's not. It's just part of the leaf. Isn't that cool? Really cool spotted leaves. Have some new growth coming up from the bottom. This is a voodoo lily. I used to have a small little I don't know what you'd call it, a grove, a small patch of these underneath a magnolia tree in the backyard. And when the magnolia tree had to go, these didn't survive. It was just too much sun without the afternoon shade that the magnolia was providing. I believe this is Soramatum venosum. The pot says Arum cornatum. That's an old, outdated name for the uh, Soramatum venosum. Very similar to the famous Amorphophallus uh, corpse flowers. Their family, you can even, when you look at the base of the leaf there, you can tell that they're family. These are hardy to zone six. These leaves over time, every year, they'll get bigger and bigger and bigger. They form a neat patch where these will be about three feet tall and these will be even wider. And the flower on them is really cool too. I'll try and find a picture and toss it up here on the screen. The flower really has nothing to do with why I grow the plant. I mostly just think that the foliage and just everything about the voodoo lilies and various types of corpse flowers, they just look really cool and exotic. I was so happy to see that they had this at the nursery because I have a little shopping cart going on Plant Delight's website with a few different varieties of voodoo lilies that I've been thinking about ordering. Because I have wanted to plant some up on this hill over here and down on the other end for a really long time. Just been slowly working the soil, trying to improve the drainage and the richness, but I think it should be good for them at this point. It's been long enough. I've been working on that soil for a few, several years now. It's loosening up in certain areas where they'll get afternoon shade and bright filtered morning light, which is perfect for them. These are an ideal plant to be able to put on a slope or up on a hill like I have here because you're looking at them from down lower. It makes it so much easier to appreciate the neat stems. And I think it'll look really neat to be able to just look over and have a grove of those single long stem stems, right? with these great big leaves towering above and shading everything underneath it. Really fun, cool plants. When the rest of them come in that I'm going to be planting, 
be doing a lot more talking about them. There's a lot to say about voodoo lilies and the just arums in general. Really neat plants. On the note of neat plants, look at all these hydrangeas. I think I may have a I can't seem to stop buying hydrangeas. Just left the camera to sit in front of the fan to cool off for a minute. It was starting to overheat, it's, you know summer. Ten minutes went by, didn't realize that I had forgot to turn the camera off. That's not a smart way to cool the camera. It'd be better if it wasn't on. Okay, now this one. May have seen this at the nursery. Who knows if I will have kept the clip in there, but you see, look at the, you can't, okay. Doesn't have much to show on it yet as far as flowers go. Just the one that's down in here. But there are plenty of buds all over this shrub. This is a nice big plant too. I can back up some more and get a better look at how big this thing is. This is a wild thyme hydrangea. I had heard about the wild thymes before, just never seen one in person. When I saw those flowers, I was like, ugh, I just I really want that. These go four by four feet, which is great. I have wanted some more hydrangeas that have some more height to them. The blue jangles only go two by two. I have a whole bunch of other hydrangeas here to show that mostly are two by two, some are three by three. So four by four is great, and I just love the flowers on this one. It gives me a vibe similar to like a pentas or like the estralitas, which are amazing, beautiful plants. Pollinators just love them. But where I live, pentas are annuals, and so are the estralias, estralitas, whichever ones you're growing. This is going to do the same thing, but have really nice big flower heads on them. They age off into a pinkish green. Pollinators should like them a lot. I like that they're a light pink and a star shape flower. Okay, a reddish pink. Whatever. You get the point. I like the color. I like the shape of the flowers. I like the size. Supposed to be a reliable bloomer, being a panicle macrophylla cross. Hopefully get flowers out of new wood and old wood, which is an issue as to why I was getting rid of, didn't end up getting rid of, but planting more hydrangeas because I have a lot of the older mop head types. And if we have a bad winter, no flowers out of those because the old wood dies off. So that's why I've been planting so many new hydrangeas this year because there are just so many great new ones to choose from. Some awesome new crosses and hybrids that have lots and lots and lots and lots of vigor. Brings me to the next plants. I am so excited about these. Look at those flowers. Why are they so overexposed? I mean, come on, look at that. Isn't that just stunning? I almost said beautiful and stunning at the same time. Dunniful. Been eyeing these for a minute. Was so glad to see that they had these at the nursery. These are Game Changer Hydrangeas. That's the name and also very literally Game Changers. Got a few of the blue, a few of the pink, and then the whiter ones that are over here are called Pickety. They'll all go roughly two by two. They have a really gorgeous domed shape to them. They just kind of look like perfect little half circle bumps once they mature and fill out. They are very vigorous, reliable hydrangeas. You can see they have the lace cap thing going on up top. And look at the flowers on this. They have the white striations on the inside and all the buds in the middle. I don't always go for lace caps. I'm pretty picky about them. I don't know why, though. Whenever I see them in a the garden, I'm always just in love with them. But for some reason, never really gotten into them in my own backyard. There might be something else you could notice from these plants as well. I'm looking at the size of the inflorescence on here. The that's, that's a good amount of flower on a pretty small little plant, right? So that's the thing with the game changer hydrangeas. With the wow time, been able to say, okay, it's a macrophylla paniculata cross with these. Don't know. I have no idea. Sugar Creek's website has a nice little article they've written about them, and it's like a top secret mix. Don't know what they're made out of, which is fine. Who cares? I, it doesn't matter how the sausage is made. These are literal game changers as far as the hydrangeas go. Here's the draw to these, other than them just having really beautiful waist cap, large flowers on them. The game changer hydrangeas are daylight neutral. A lot of the hydrangeas that we plant in our gardens do not start to produce buds until the day length start to get longer. These being daylight neutral, these will start blooming much, much, much earlier in the season. Should be blooming in the spring and then well into the fall. And they bloom on old and new wood. So if there's a late frost, something that kills back the buds, which these are also supposed to be more resistant to. Should be pretty cold hardy as far as that's concerned. 
but should that happen, it's all right. They're gonna bloom on new wood. So no big deal. That being said, they're also supposed to be very sturdy when it comes, really, Turbo? Not right now. Why are you making noise? We're over here talking about plants, having a relaxing time. What are you doing? Uh, chill, everything's fine. Don't need to be all barky. I think it's approaching brat o'clock. Certain time in the morning, later in the morning, it turns into a brat, don't you? Yes, you do, you turn into a brat. You start getting grumpy and barky and growly. And that's what's happening right now. So if you continue to hear him growling in the background, just know he's laying right next to me and everything's fine. He's for some reason refusing to take a nap even though he's tired. Yeah, excellent hydrangeas. Five through nine, about two feet by two feet. Overall, they have a nice dome shape appearance to them. They have a neat foliage too. That was another thing I like about them. It's not really that typical hydrangea foliage. I mean, it kind of is, it's hydrangea esque but i don't know it doesn't scream paniculata to me it doesn't really scream macrophylla maybe it screams lace cap i don't know i guess i don't spend a ton of time looking for foliage on lace caps a deeper green slightly more glossy these being so cold hardy and reliable bloomers good plant for containers too of course below zone six should definitely protect them right don't want to have too much damage to them they're a five through nine pretty broad growing range below zone six in a container i would be careful with them really even below zone seven take them someplace where they're not going to get destroyed by the winter elements keep the pots watered occasionally and that was another thing i really liked about them perennials and pots i love perennials and pots especially ones that are going to have the bloom power of an annual the white one as the flowers mature they will get a kind of a pink outline on them do any of them there's sort of some of that going on up here subtle but you can see some of the pink on the edges of the flowers and then the blue you still need to do the soil set of fire thing to keep them blue. Oh, look at all the buds on this. This thing is tiny. That's a little plant in a gallon sized container. It's got buds all over it. That is so nice. Which, I, you know, when things come up from a grower in a greenhouse, that can be the case no matter what, right? Especially with hydrangeas. It's not that hard to hit these with the right hormones and chemicals to induce their blooming or really just change their lighting. But despite there being ways to induce the flowers, it's just so nice. Tiny little two foot by two foot. They kind of remind me of what I would consider to be like a cold hardy sun patient, even though these shouldn't probably go full sun. If you live in a really hot climate, I'll be giving them a full sun in the morning and then shaded dappled light throughout the afternoons. But those flowers, the big ones that are open, those look very impatient like to me. And then as these get that nice dome shape to them and just be covered and all the flowers it's just they're gonna look so nice and so fancy i love them i'm really just happy to have some lace cap type hydrangeas i have plenty of paniculatas i have plenty of macrophyllas i needed some of the lace caps out here i don't need any oak leaves i'm not i'm not into the oak leaves give that a few years i'm sure i'll be really excited about planting an oak leaf out here but for now just the <laughs> The, I have so many hydrangeas. And it used to be plants that I didn't particularly care for, but the more that they have been uh, cultivated to be more sturdy and to have a better bloom power and bloom stay and stronger buds, I am, I'm very into them. I like a perennial that will just bloom and bloom and bloom and bloom. And that's what I'm going to get with these. I have fun plans for these. I got three of each color and believe it or not, I wish I had gotten more because I have a very large area we'll talk about in the garden tour where I would like to put a lot of these. I need to keep an eye on the light over there because it might be a little bit too shady. But I also have some areas in my front where I think these will look great in containers and tucked underneath some shrubbery. But yeah, that's okay. They had a lot. I can always go back and get more. Nothing wrong with more trips to the nursery. Yeah, I think that that's everything. Lots of new, fun, exciting things. Oh, no, 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 no. The elephant ears. I need to talk about the elephant ears. Is that better? Cooled off yet? think so yes doesn't feel that hot at least not in the shade but you know cameras it's what they do look at the aren't they beautiful the elephant ears i couldn't even get all my words out i love them so much these are so nice i'm going to stay in the shade just because i know two minutes out there camera's going to turn off again these are alocasia borneo giants you might be able to see why they get that name these will keep growing too the borneo giants can push over 10 feet tall the leaves can be well over three to four feet wide as they are. Like, okay, we can go up for just a moment so we can get a closer look at the foliage on there. They have gorgeous foliage. These leaves are absolutely massive. I used to have a couple of Borneo giants planted down there by that Alexander palm. I had them for several years and in 2020 had to make some decisions about some plants that I thought maybe didn't need to come inside for the winter because other people doing things for me. And I said, you know what, the Borneo giants, I see them for sale fairly often, those can go. Because they're a plant that grows vigorously, so I figured 
just leave them outside for the winter. Odds are they won't come back. They didn't, but it'd be okay. I can buy new ones and they will grow very quickly and get to be looking like the ones I had before. And these are actually smaller than the ones I had before. They'll start to get a trunk on them, a trunk or a pseudo stem as they get bigger. I just, oh, they're so nice. Hey Turbs, can you even see Turbo through there? Where'd you go? Hey Turbo, what you doing? Come here, come on, you can come through. That's what I thought, you walk right through there. These are what I had my eyes on when I heard about the sale. I was like, mm-hmm, gonna have to grab some of those. They did have spider mites on them, which not unusual considering how unusually dry it has been in the St. Louis area. The alocasias are already prone to spider mites. Nothing some neem and some high pressure sprays of water won't fix. I already neemed them when I brought these back yesterday, had them back in the shade and I gave them the neem, rinsed them off, gave them a little bit more neem. Didn't give, I sprayed the neem on them. It makes it sound like I'm like giving medication. That's not what's going on there. And they look fine now. They're also in a greenhouse, which didn't have poor airflow, but it's not the same as having them outside where you can blast them with water and that will help keep them at bay outdoors. Oh, it startled me. Hey, Colbs, how you doing? Just walk around on my feet. You're just gonna keep harassing me until I give you the food? You've already had so much, there's no way you want, oh, I think maybe he's just saying hi. That makes more sense. It's warm, so the tortoise is very hyped up, tortoising all over the place. These I got to plant up on top of the hill, and I can't show you because there's people working right directly on the other side of the fence, so it's just so awkward over there, but behind the Miami planters that are by the steps, so directly behind those Edenidia palms, one on each side of the steps, I think the sun exposure right there is going to be really great for them. They're going to be nice and wide. I think this is how the video started when I was talking about the canna musifolias, those banana cannas, and how I was thinking about putting those up there. And then I saw that there was a sale and I thought, you know, no, this is, this is better. I like these much better. I love the banana cannas, but it's just not ideal time for transplanting. I don't think they would have done well. They probably just would have wilted down and started over from the bottom, which would take several weeks. I don't want to wait several weeks to get some more screening and privacy up there. I would like a much more instant effect. Ultimately, we we'll want something evergreen up there, but it's just not time yet. I haven't found what I want for the price that I'm willing to pay to put up there. So for now, these will go up there in the winter time. It, there are multiple things that I like to do with them. Sometimes I'll just leave them as they are, dig them up, throw them in a bucket that has some holes in the bottom, put them in the growth space and make sure they get some water occasionally. They usually do fine in the growth space. Spider mites can be an issue, but if I keep the foliage trimmed off of them, it's not a problem. Or you can cut them all the way back as long as they're large enough and have matured and formed a nice tuber that can be stored. That's an option too. I'm probably gonna have to wait another year or two until I'm confident in the size of tubers that these would have for storage, which is fine because they're easy enough to just cut the foliage off, dig them up with a shovel. And like I just said, pretty easy to bring them in. Not necessarily to bring them in as a house plant, but to keep them just going semi-dormant during the winter time, simple. That's pretty easy to do. So that's, that's the highlight. Aren't they just magnificent? Really nice big plants. Those are in uh, maybe, no, those are probably 12 and a half gallon containers. I'm gonna say 15, but I think they're a little bit small for 15s. These will easily double in size by the end of the growing season. Everything that I showed in today's video, I'm not planting this weekend. So I don't know if by the time the garden tour comes around, if they'll be planted only because it's supposed to be in the mid to upper nineties over the weekend. And I think that it would just be dumb to be pulling the plants messing with their root balls, stick them in the ground, and having that kind of heat on them when instead I could just tuck them into the shade, keep them well watered for a couple of days, and then it's going to cool back off into the mid 80s. That would probably be the smarter time to go ahead and plant them. If that weren't the case, but we're going to stay in the 90s, I'd just do it and make sure that they stay very well watered, regardless of you're still well watered, right? But since I can look at the extended forecast and see that the temperatures are gonna go right back down, for a good week or two, right? It seems like the smart thing to do. I would really like to get them planted up there on that hill, but I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna take these and probably push them back here behind the glider for the weekend to help keep them cool. The same thing with all the plants in the gorilla cart. Oh, no, no, one more. This was not in the video today, but what was it? I think last week, yeah, last weekend's video, I was at the Home Depot or outside in the front of the store. And I vlogged it. I don't know what happened. Somehow that clip didn't make it into that video. I don't know why. But I did want to show these because I think that they are a very nice looking sun patient. And if the camera would do it, come on camera. Sun patients, compact red candy. The candies, they're sun patients that have multicolored 
flowers. I have the purple candy down in the planters on the other end where the hydrangeas are. Not gonna, it doesn't, you'll see them in the garden tour. And I really, really like them. And I saw these, the red candy, and I was just like, whoa, I gotta get a few of these. I may go back and get some more. They have a darker foliage on them, which I do enjoy. It's a compact too, I don't think I said that. The compact sun patients tend to stay smaller, smaller, but generally 18 by 18 to 24 by 24. They'll get to be a decent size. And these have the wispies on them. You see the wisps down there? The little, little wispies that you see on New Guinea patients. More often on New Guinea patients, I don't really notice them on the sun patients, but that could also be because they're usually covered in so many flowers you can't even see the wispies underneath. They give me much more of a New Guinea vibe than the sun patients, because sun patients, if the flowers were just a little bit bigger, just a little bit bigger, I would like them even more. But as they are, there's no reason to look a gift horse in the mouth, right? It's great to be able to grow in patients in so many different conditions like you can with the various new hybrids that are out there like the sun patients. But there is something nice about a new guinea patient with those gigantic flowers on them. I'm getting more of that vibe from this even though I don't think the flowers are any larger. And also like the cosmic impatience, which I love and never ever ever see for sale around here. So I think that this is a really good substitute for something that I've wanted to grow for such a long time. It's not as vibrant and the pattern is slightly different from those cosmic impatience, but pretty close. Getting that vibe. I like the colors and those patterns a lot, especially on top of that darker foliage. I will definitely be getting more of these if I see them around. Same thing with the purple candy. Love them. Really nice tone, good shades. So much extra interest by having the stripes inside the flowers like that. Gorgeous flowers. And the camera wants to overheat again. Okay, I think this is where I need to say goodbye. Didn't get a ton done in the yard, but that's okay. Got to do some shopping. Got a bunch of new plants, lots of new projects starting. Monstera's out here. Need to retie it and do a twist because that just that looks stupid not gonna bother though until the new pump gets here because i'm gonna have to get back there and be crawling all over this thing to get a new pump set up in there Anyways, yeah thanks for hanging out hope you enjoyed got to see some fun new plants comment down below say hi i love talking to everybody y'all been growing any of the plants that i was showing especially those the uh, game changer hydrangeas i'm so excited about those when i have those all planted up together not over here mostly they're going to be down there on that end it's oh it's going to be glorious especially next year, and once they get to be that full two foot by two foot size, just all those patches of colors on the lace caps. Ugh, cannot wait. Watching the tortoise. He's so fascinated by the tortoise when he's over there where he can't get to him. Otherwise, Turbo does not care at all. Like, he'll be sleeping in the house and the tortoise will walk right across his feet and he'll barely even open his eyes to look at him, just go right back to sleep. Finally taking a nap, thank God. Not being so grumpy now. Anyways, hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.